All right, g'day guys. Today I thought we'd uh, answer a question that came up on the forums. Uh, Gord uh, asked for my opinion on uh, basically whether, you know, utilising the, uh, the parent-child sort of method of sorting information around works is the best way to do things or whether, you know, using tags is a great way to do things. Um, and it, it's, it's a question of... I thought about but never really put into practice so I went away and did some testing and thought I'd just share my, my results. So in front of me you can see Realmworks, um, you can see the last screen I was working on um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump over uh, to my mechanics reference section um, and show you what I'm referring to. Uh, so you can see here specifically what I'm looking at is the, my monster section, uh, you can see I've got the monster, uh, monster manual um, I do have other monsters in here as well. Um, and this is where I come along uh, and I've entered all the names of the monsters. Not necessarily fluffed out all the monsters yet. Um, that's a work in progress. But what I've historically done is I've done book, then I've done A to Z. Um, so it allows for me to quickly sort by book. Um, and I find this is handy because obviously generally when I'm thinking of a monster, I want to know which book to go and pick up off the shelf. Um, or sometimes when I'm prepping, I'll actually start with the book and I'll sit there and, you know, on the couch flipping through the book, figuring out what it is I want to bring to my table. Um, and then once I've found it, I'll come back here and I'll, I'll use the sort of uh, structure and realm works to find that monster and, and fluff it out. Um, but the, the concept of tags is something I've not really used before and I've never really sort of looked deeply into what it can do for me. So, um, you know, Gord, Gord asked, would it be a better way to sort of tag things? Um, according to, you know, maybe book names or monster types or, I don't know, you know, whatever you think you could tag something on a common reference you could do. So I went away and I tried it, and i got to admit, I really like it. So what I've done in here is I've created a, uh, a type tag, and I've put in humanoid. So Aracocra, or Ara, Aracocra, I don't know how you say that, um, is a humanoid, and you can see here, I've added that in, and over here on the right, you can see I've now got a, a humanoid tag. Uh, it says type, it says humanoid, so, and what I really like is I can actually click that and add that to my active filter, and now every monster that's actually a humanoid comes up, and you can see I haven't done it for many of them yet, this is going to be a work in progress because I really need to go away and, and do this for everyone, um, but yeah, it, it's something you can use to sort of quickly come through um, and have a look at uh, what type of uh, monsters you want to do. Um, where I think this could really work is uh, imagine a scenario where, um, you know, perhaps you're, you're playing a Fey encounter and you want to uh, come along and basically um, see what sort of Fey you have available. Um, you could actually just come in here and do a search on Fey. Um, this hawk would be a beast. So there we go, I've just added in that type for him. Now I've got beast, and if I click that, I can now see all the beasts. Um, I think that'd be a really sort of cool way to sort information out and um, make it so that when you're prepping something brand new, like not something that's pre-written, you're doing it yourself, and you wanted to know what type of inf uh, monster you could put in there, um, I think that'd be a really cool way. So... Um, you know, let, let's say you were looking for forest dwelling monsters, you could have a, a tag that said, you know, this is a forest dwelling monster. But I kind of like where this, this could go, so let's just run through and show you how it's done. So if I click on the Manage tab, and you can see you've got here the option for tags. This loads up, and this is the back-end configuration. And you can see what I've done here, is I've added my own type. The way I've done this is you come up here to active and you click the plus button and it brings up this list here. Um, I'm going to call this one monster source books. And we click add tag. And you can see I can just add them. Uh, There's the three big ones that I've got. Uh, we'll save that. Alright, 
right and now when I come over to my monster this is a, a monster manual book so I'm gonna have a snippet above uh, make sure better come up here and say Just about here. There we go. So monster manual. There we go. I could call it source book. And save it. And now I've got, you know, the monster source books. Actually, I don't even think I really like monster source books. I think what I would actually do is just create a source books. Uh, section and then I'd go as far as to add them all in um, I'm just thinking on the fly here I wonder, because what I could actually do is where I'm starting to get information um, coming from everywhere, because I've added in all the different books. What I could actually do is come in here and add a snippet above, add my tags. And have my source books. That could be a way for me to sort of use tags to sort of keep an eye track of where information is coming from. Um, it's a bit of extra work, um, but it, it could be something that works. I don't know. It's just an idea. <laughs> um, but anyway, now. Obviously, it's going to be a lot of work for you to go through and do this every single time. All right, if you wanted to do this on every single monster, you have to go in, you've got to add the type. Um, it is possible to sort of make it so it comes up automatically, though. So let's go manage again, and we'll go into categories. And what I've done here um, is basically come down to my article categories. I've got my monster. You can see I've got a little exclamation mark there. That's because I've modified this one. I've gone away from the default. So what I've done in here is I've basically come along um, and there used to be protection on it. And I'll show you what it looks like with protection on it. Remove protection. So you have to remove the protection to allow you to edit it. And once I've done that, I've basically been able to come into the overview and you can see I've got the type. So I can actually add another snippets type if I want. Um, we're going to call this one source books. Uh, we're going to make it a tag. And I'm going to make this one the source books tag. I'm not going to pick which one it comes up by default. And click done. Alright, that now adds that in. Now if we go back and we have a look at an article, um, you can see it doesn't come up automatically. Uh, but let's have a look at goats. Goats is an empty one, I haven't done that. If I was to create something new, or in this case here, resynchronize it. Actually, I think we need to do everything. Uh, synchronize the structure to match the category definition. All right, it goes back to the category, um, which is what we just basically set up in the category section. Ask what should be there. And in this case here, it's saying, look, the goat should be here. Um, and now I've got this ad automatically added. So if you did this at the start, this is something that would be uh, set up for you um, and it would be a, a very handy sort of functionality for you. Now I've got the, the questions asked with every single monster that I create um, and I can just, you know, then set it up very quickly um, and use it. I can have a look at my tags, I can see what beasts I've got in my book um, and I can filter on it. So it's, it's a pretty powerful sort of tool for um, sorting through your information. Um, it's something I certainly think I'm going to try and use moving forward. Um, as you can imagine, I've got a lot of monsters. Um, I don't know if I'll stick with the source book. I think I'll stick with what I'm doing here um, for my sources. But 
Um, it's going to take me a while to do this, um, but it's something I'm just going to do over time, I think. Uh, but I can certainly see why it could be a fun uh, thing to have uh, when you're creating sort of your monsters um, from there. So anyway, different idea, different concept. Just thought I'd uh, throw it out there and uh, show you guys what can be achieved. Uh, throw you the uh, benefit that you can take from that um, and see if you guys can use it at your table. Um, I probably will just uh, expand on this a little bit um, and talk more about categories. Um, there is something I've been wanting to do occasionally and that's I always come across uh, a scenario where I want monsters uh, in my my topics and by that I mean you know under Storm King's Thunder sometimes it, there's a call for me to have a very unique monster like a um, let's say a, a named dragon um, and I want to have them on this view here instead of in my mechanics hidden away um, because you know it's a unique monster it's actually a specific uh, guy it just makes sense for me to have it over there instead of hidden away inside my monster category so how do you do that because for anyone who's used the tool you'll know that anything that's in the article categories you can't actually create um, and put it in anywhere so there's no ability to copy unfortunately oh there's a duplicate but I don't know if you could actually move it Can we? Uh, you won't be able to. Not unless you're... No. So anyway, the way I would do it then is come up here and, and go new. And you can see I've created a new new one here. Um, and what we're going to do, I'm going to come down here. I'm basically going to cut and paste. I don't know how this is going to handle unique... There we go. <laughs> that makes it so it works. And I'm just going to copy in everything uh, from one to the other. I'm going to set my icon. And you can see there's a lot of different icons in here that you probably don't see in the default. Um, so you might be worth playing around this just for the sake of playing around with it. Uh, what's my abbreviation? Monster. Uh, probably people would be where it comes under. All right, and then we're going to basically go through and, and start filling out what comes under this category. Um, so this could be quite a, a big task. Um, but, you know, cut and paste makes life a lot easier. So what have we got? We've got monster. Um, we want to add in the type because I certainly like that. There we go. It'd be cool if we could copy from here. That'd be awesome. Uh, statistics, though, is certainly one that I need. You can see how she has a uh, section definition there. Basically, I can just cut and paste, cut and paste, and, and slowly move this one over. Uh, tactics, not something I use a whole lot. Oops. So, tactics, environment, rewards. And additional details. Alright, and then what we'll do is we'll come back over here um, and we'll just cut and paste the rest of the information just to make sure it's exactly the same.
and this just fills a gap um, that I felt I had. Um, I'm always making unique monsters. Um, you know, specifically yesterday I spent the day making uh, some very unique dragons uh, that exist in different locations in the world. Um, and I just didn't feel that they, they sort of fit in my mechanics section. I, I wanted them to exist as an entity inside my world and, and not actually just be linked to. So this lets me do that now. I've not played in here before though. Um, I've always been scared about the unlocking concept and removing protection, but uh, you know, it seems to work. Alright, so let's save this, we'll click done, and let's go and see what that now means. Alright, so if we go over into our world, let's say the Iron Road has a unique monster. I can now create Bob the Bugbear uh, over here inside my world. And you'll notice that I'm, I'm working not in the mechanics reference, um, which is good for me because this, this icon here is something that I know means monster. Um, and, you know, I like being able to now have the ability to create that um, in my actual Storm King's Thunder. Uh, whereas before, all I would be able to do um, is link like this. Um, and you can see I've now got Bugbear and Content Links. And I can go to it, but Bugbear exists in the Mechanics Reference. So I can't see it over here. And I really like using this structure over here to show me who exists where in my world. As you can see, I do it with NPCs um, to show me who's living where. Um, because it gives me the ability to move them. You know, Bob the Bugbear might have an army behind him, um, and he might go and move into Imrit's Lair. And you can see I can very quickly and easily move him around in my system to say he's now there. I couldn't do that when it exists in the mechanics reference. Uh, the mechanics reference is really great for things that exist sort of solely um, where they belong, but not necessarily where they are now. So yeah, anyway, it's, it's, it's now something I can do. Um, it's now something you could do. Uh, check it out. It, it might be something you're interested in, uh, in using. Thanks guys, if you've got any questions, ask them in the comments below. Have a great day.